All right, parent functions. Let's look at the different basic functions we need for this course. First function is linear. A linear function equation is f at x equals x, or as we famously know it, it, it as is y equals x. What does that mean? Well, given the x coordinates we have studied up until now, means that every time for every x value, the y value is exactly the same for a linear function. Well, not only is it is this true, we need to look at the domain. The domain of a linear function is as follows. Now, very important. What does this graph look like? Let's do a quick sketch. If I gave you a, a quick look at this graph without any coordinates, you will see that it will look something like the following. Ready? Here we go. It will look something like this where there is an arrow on either end, and this is y equals x line. So the y equals x line has a domain of x belongs to real, and a range of y belongs to real. And that is true for all lines that are not horizontal or vertical. Another thing important is to be able to apply the transformations. So looking at this ugly equation right here, we have to be able to apply the transformations. So in the table of values, we will see one half x plus one, where we get that is horizontally compressed by a factor of a half and moving left one. So again, sorry, right one. So one, uh, compressed horizontally by a factor of a half and right one. So that's exactly what you see here. Compressed by a half, half of x, plus one to mean right one. Now the upside is negative one third plus four. That's negative one third y plus four. And what we will do is take these equa this equation and be able to apply the transformations. Now something else to note is that you may be asked to be able to go from here to a simplified statement of the last step right here. How do we do that? Well, it's simply by expanding. We expand, expand, and collect like terms to get this answer. All right, moving forwards. There's quadratics. A quadratic is f at x equals x squared, or y equals x squared. And what we do is we have a basic table for quadratics. That is, the same x values we've been using up until now, and this time the y values are all the x values squared. So 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Now, the domain of a parabola, let's do a quick sketch. All parabola, uh, the basic parabola will be a graph that looks, if we have a, an x and y axis, oops, let's move that so that we can actually, s one second, here we go. All right, here we go. Goodness me, it's having a day. All right, and we will have a parabola that looks kind of like this. Up, and then we have arrows at the end of each side, just like that. And those arrows allow us to now, looking at the parabola without the arrows, the parabola will have a domain of x belongs to real, and a range of y belongs to real such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Now obviously the domain of range changes according to transformations. So let's look at an example. y equals something really ugly where we have a bunch of things going on. What's happening here? Well, we have a vertical reflection, a vertical stretch by a factor of two, a horizontal stretch by a factor of three, and a translation of left one. So when we put it in the table, we will have 3x minus 1 and negative 2y, and there is no vertical translation, so it's just going to be negative 2y. Once we do this, what we can do is we can expand this equation, and we can find the coordinates. When we expand the quadratic, you will have this 1 third pulled out to make it squared, and then we simplify by simplifying the a value to get negative 2 over 9. And then this part, folks, we just leave that alone as x plus 1 all squared. 
You can expand out the x plus 1 all squared to be x squared plus 2x plus 1 if you wanted to. Now, very important. Next step, exponential function. So in this case, we're looking at the base b. What will our basic table look like? Well, we have the same x values that we're looking at each and every single time, but this time our y values are going to be what we just learned in the last unit. 1 over b squared, 1 over b, 1, b, and b squared. And don't forget the horizontal asymptote. Next, we look at the domain, which is x belongs to real, and the range, which will be y belongs to real, such that y is greater than 0. Again, if you remember or recall, the curve looks like this. If, it, if the b value is greater than 1, if the b value is less than 1, it's going to be a curve that looks in the uh, other direction. Something else to note about this is that horizontal, uh, sorry, a exponential, there are only two graphs you have to learn in this unit or in this course that have asymptotes. One asymptote is going to be this one, an exponential, and another one a little bit later on. Also, don't forget that all exponential functions will have an asymptote right along the x-axis unless it has been moved up or down. Not sideways, not stretched, not compressed, but if it moves up or down, so will the asymptote. All right, here's an example of an equation. What happens to this uh, exponential function? Here it is, folks. How do we do this? Remember, it's negative 2 thirds times uh, 4 to the power of negative 1 half x plus 1 and then minus 3 at the end. So what does this mean? Well, negative 1 half means it'll be negative 2. So we're going to have negative 2 times x. So that will be a negative, a horizontal reflection, horizontal stretch by factor of 2, and a horizontal translation of left 1. That's where we get the minus 1. For the y values, we take it and multiply it by negative 2 thirds times y, and then we subtract 3. Once we do that, we can apply all of these to the transformations to get our new graph. All right. Now, if you were to expand this, this is in, expand it and simplify, you could do the following. Now, pay attention. How did 4 all of a sudden turn into a half. That only happens in special cases. Keep in mind, it's 4 to the negative a half. That means that we're taking the flip of 4 and square rooting it. Well, lucky for us, we can take the square root of this number and we end up with 1 half as the final answer. Not to worry, you will not be asked to expand exponential just yet. You'll probably be asked more so in grade 12. Absolute function. What does an absolute function look like? Well, it has the absolute sign, and what it looks like is the following. Ready? Same x values that we've been using all along, but this time our graph is going to look a little funny, which I'm going to draw out for you. So, we have this going on. Ready? And it will look like the following. It will be two lines going in either direction, one this way and one this way. So like a V. This V is actually two linear functions. It's a piecewise function for absolute. Now, in terms of what we need to know, understand, absolute means the number, not the sign. So if I take the absolute of negative 2, that means that I want the value of absolute of negative 2 to be, that's right, 2. Absolute of negative 1, 1. Absolute of 0, 0. Absolute of 1, 1. And absolute of 2, 2. So that is what the absolute coordinates look like. Next, you're going to study the domain. Well, the domain is x belongs to real, and the range is y belongs to real, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Hey, we've seen that domain arrange range before. That's right. 
it was a parabola. So you could be asked on a test to compare the different uh, basic functions and describe to me similarities and differences between them. All right, next, y is equal to 4 thirds, negative 2 fifths, x minus a half, uh, and the absolute, and then minus a half. What are we doing here? We're now going to take all of this and apply it to the function. So, vertically stretch by a factor of 4 thirds. Horizontally reflect. Horizontally stretch by a factor of 5 over 2. Horizontally translate right a half. Or, uh, vertically translate down a half. All right, and when we plug it into the table as such, what we want to do is find the coordinates. So we apply these rules to get those coordinates. Okay, 8 over 15, and this 8 over 15 is just the simplified version of this. Again, I'm not going to ask you to simplify this. I would prefer if you just use this. You will learn more about expanding and simplifying when it comes to the next chapter, uh, and then, sorry, in grade 12, where we talk more about being able to simplify equations. All right, next graph we're looking at is the cubic. The cubic function looks as follows. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to draw an x and y axis. Here we go, as such. x and y axis. And our graph is going to look like this. This is our cubic function. Our cubic function has the same x values that we've been using all along and now we're going to look at the y values by cubing each of these x values. When we cube them they will get negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. Okay, and then what we can do is now state the domain which is x belongs to real, the range which is y belongs to real, so in this case, it looks very much like the linear function, which also has the same domain and range. And then now we have an example of a cubic. Now we're not going to expand this one due to the fact that expanding a cube you haven't done yet. And we're not going to work on that in this unit. So we'll expand. We won't need to expand it, but we can describe the transformations. There's a vertical uh, reflection, vertical stretch by factor of 5 horizontal stretch by factor of 4, and translation of left 3, and down 4. So that's what this all means. And plug it in. Here they are. And yes, you can expand it if you choose to. Okay, next one. Root function. The root function looks as follows. Now, the x values are different for the root function, so let me show you what this looks like. There is, for example, a very, very hard start with this. It's so hard, in fact, that uh, when I talk to it, talk to students, I say, make sure you put a closed circle right at the very first value. And it's going to look like the following, like this. This root function has a very special place in this unit. A little bit later on, we'll learn about that. So here, same x, so this time the x coordinates, we can't use the same because there is no value before negative 2. There's no value under negative 2. So we have a hard start at 0, and we go to 0, 1, 4, 4, 9, and 16 to find the perfect square root so that we can graph this in any graph. So, square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. And square root of 16 is 4. So these are the coordinates that you will have to transform. How are you going to transform them? Let's look. Before we do that, don't forget the hard start. This dot means that there's a hard start to the question, and that means it doesn't have a continuation, doesn't move on forever and ever. It actually stops at zero, zero. 
Now, when we stop at 0, 0, our domain means it's going to be x belongs to real, such that x can be greater than or equal to 0, and range can be y belongs to real, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Because again, we're looking at this graph. Next, here's an example of a question that is that you can get the answer for. Negative 3 quarters y plus 2, oops, sorry, minus 2. And then on the x, it's going to be 1 third, which is 1 third instead of 3, it's 1 third. x is our x values. And that's what we're going to do to get that answer. Do this and plug it in up here. 1 third x, comma, negative 3 quarters y minus 2. Okay, another one. Reciprocal function. This is our last function. f at x is equal to y of 1 over x, and you convert it to y equals 1 over x. All right, so how do we answer this? Well, our basic graphs will have six coordinates, and you see them right here. These six coordinates go from negative 2 all the way up to 2. The same negative, we have positive. So nothing's really different, per se, except the values that we're looking for and the order we put it in. So we find out the value for this, and we plug it in. Negative 2, plug it into here, and we get negative 1 over 2. And plug in negative 1, I, give, I get negative 1. Negative a half, sorry, positive a half will give us negative 2, and positive a half will give us 2. So these are the coordinates. So we have to figure those out first. Once we do that, we can determine the values that will help us with the restriction. And what we're looking at is the following domain and range x cannot equal 0, y cannot equal 0, that's the domain of range. The function y equals this whole thing right here means that this is the numerator, that happens to the y. This is the denominator, this happens to the x. Take it and flip it, please. So negative, sorry, negative 3 over 1 half x minus 2. You will have to flip this a little bit and then plus 1. So let's describe it. Vertically reflect by factor of, sorry, vertically reflect, vertically stretch by factor of 3, horizontally stretch by factor of 2, horizontally translate right 2, and then we add 1. So that is the first one. So that is your reciprocal function that I want you to be able to draw. Don't forget to apply it in the table and apply all these coordinates and asymptotes into the table. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day. Take care.